It is an American tradition to have your father walk you down the aisle on the big day of your wedding day. However, this tradition will not be celebrated in my family. I remember when all the little kids in my grade used to go out and play and catch and run with their father. However, I was always inside playing board games. This is because in 1981, my father was in an almost severe fatal motorcycle accident, leaving him a paraplegic for the rest of his life. The doctor said there was absolutely no cure and that he would be wheelchair bound for the rest of his life. You could only imagine the humiliation that I suffered for the last 18 years of my life, knowing that your father is always going to be in a wheelchair, looking down upon society. Right now, he's got his spinal cord set, or cut at a T9 level, which is everything from your belly button down. He is unable to feel, hence the fact why he can't walk, hence the fact why he's in a wheelchair. He has a rare condition about 2,000 people in the world have. It's called a cernix. As you can see here, let's make the jump, that there is real footage. The white spot in the middle is a sac, which is full of fluid, and there's pressure due to stress or unknown causes it causes the sac to go farther up your spinal cord until it eventually will hit your cerebellum where it will be fatal. Now, as you can all see, this is near and dear to my heart because not only is it my father, but it's the rest of his life. Thirteen years ago, in 1998, a man from Wisconsin personally contacted my dad by the names of James Thompson and told him he might have the cure for him. He said it was very risque, but it saved millions of lives. His topic? Stem cell research. And that is what I'm here to explain to you today, is about stem cell research and hopefully change your perspective on the topic. What you might not know about stem cells is they're in your body right now, and they're in mine as well. They're in every human being's body. They are consistent in our bones, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. And what a stem cell is, is simply just a cell found in your body. Those are the most common places that can replicate. So for example, my dad can't feel his legs because of nerve endings, so he can take a cell potentially in another part of his body, maybe out of his bone marrow, put it in the nerve endings, and it could prepare him to walk again. More has been proven in the last two years than any other time since Barack Obama lifted the ban that George Bush put on in March, or lifted it in March of 2009. We now found the richest sources. The first source is your umbilical cord. When you're pregnant, the mom has two choices to what to do with the umbilical cord. She can either trash it, or she can save it for up to 75 years in a cyrogenic bank. Now, this bank is refrigerated and can help your son or daughter in the future. Say, 20, 30 years from now, they get in an accident just like my father. If they have these stem cells from their umbilical cord when they're born, there's a whole bunch or a whole lot of potential that could help fix them. The second source is a somatic cell, which is any other cell in your body except for a gamete. It normally comes from your blood or your bone marrows, and the most popular spots are your skulls, ribs, and femurs. However, it's said to be very painful, and the prime ages to find it is between the age of 20 and 30. In March of 2009, we found out how to transplant these stem cells into our own bodies. The first is called autologics. It's from the donor itself, either from its blood or bone. This leads to no rejection and very small risk of infection. And the second is allogenetic. It comes from relatives or someone very close to you since it's hard to match. So your mom or your dad or someone alike. However, it has a risk for graft versus toast, which is when your body thinks that the new cell is an enemy and deletes it. The downfall to all this information is how much it costs to research it. In the last 10 years, it is said that we have spent an approximate one trillion dollars. However, if we can spend all this money on military and wars, I don't see why we can't save thousands of lives to help keep our country safe if just keeping them alive. Scott Chris said, a scientist, in 2001, 80,000 people needed organs to survive, but only 20,000 got them, which leads to say something about our health care right now. If that many people need organs and we're unable to give them to them, something needs to be done. So, stem cells not only would help my father, but they would also help people who have cancer. 1,500 people die a day due to cancer, whether it's skin cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer. That means one-fourth of our society is infected, as well as Alzheimer's. 50% over the age of 65 can't remember their own daughter's name, as well as stroke, blindness, Parkinson's, learning defects, nerve damage, and diabetes. Now. It's been proven in China and as well as working in USA labs with lab rats who relate to us like mammals. 
I know that every one of you listening to this speech right now can relate in some way, whether you know somebody who has cancer, Alzheimer's, any of the list of the diseases that I said. So why not continue to spend money and fund and be pro-stem cell to help millions of people save their lives? If you, blah.